everyone. Dive into Anchor Together, a captivating YouTube series that offers an intimate look into the extraordinary lives of seafarers and their families. From long-standing maritime partnerships to new connections formed at sea, Anchor Together highlights the incredible journeys of those who navigate both the ocean and the relationships with passion and resilience. Get ready for an engaging twist with Anchor Together. and welcome back to a fresh new episode of Anchor Together. Today I'm super excited because we have two very strong women uh, who have agreed to be a part of this interview. So I welcome Kalpana Desai and Amrika Singh. Thank you both of you for coming for our show. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dipti Ji. <laughs> so I've always uh, followed Kalpana Ji's work as well and uh, we are so excited that she agreed to come here from her schedule and let's kick start the interview now without any much delay. So Kalpana Ji, tell us about your role as a port side representative and what exactly do you do? Um, first of all, at the outset, I would like to thanks because I appreciate the title you had given Anchor Together because I am having the feeling that I, I have my anchor with the seafarers, I have my anchor with the J, Jaharlal Nehru Port Trust and I have anchor with the maritime industry. So I appreciate the, those who have decided to choose this title. The second thing, uh, last uh, four decades I am working for the Mumbai port and also being a, a woman's a chairperson of the Indian ports uh, I am very closely working with the industry and uh, I think I am having the superb experience and I know how to deal with the women's issue and uh, this is unfortunately I got this opportunity to work with all of you. Alright, okay. Ambika, tell me something, you are into marketing and communication if I am not wrong. Right. So what, how could you describe your role as and your key responsibilities which you have as a marketing and communication expert. Okay, so I'm in the marketing uh, profile at JN Port. So, and this includes marketing and communication. So in a nutshell, if I say, I have to ensure that JN Port is there at the right place, is seen in the right way, and at the right time. So that sums up my key responsibility, though the platforms or the medium that we use is multiple. But the single aim is this, so showcasing JN port in the right way as the best performing port of India. That's lovely. But it's a tough job to, uh, you know, kind of, especially in today's time where you have social media, which has so much of influence. So do you find it more challenging now or do you think it's now easier? See, any work which doesn't have certain challenges gets monotonous and boring. So I feel the challenges adds to the interesting element of this profile and social media for sure. As a port, when I joined here in 2013, from that point and this time, the way we are in terms of our presence on social media is enormous. And we do get such a positive feedback from various uh, stakeholders across private sector, other government ports that uh, we are doing a good job. <laughs> yes, and yes, you are visible. We do see a oh. lot of posts and we see good things happening at the port as well. Yeah. That's lovely. So, Kalpana ji, tell me, what are your key challenges which you have faced uh, with the position you've been holding? Uh, uh, as you are aware that Mumbai port is a premier port and 152 years old port. And uh, till now, uh, the women's issue has not been addressed. Okay. But I... Uh, because of everyone's support, I could become a, the first Labour Representative Board Member after the 150 years. Wow. So I think uh, credit goes to my Transport and Dock Workers Union's leadership also. And as, as we said that women are very low representative in maritime sector or in the port sector. 
बट नाउ वुमेन्स आर विजिबल एंड आई एम वन ऑफ द बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल आई कैन से so <laughs> we are visible that's why you have invited us <laughs> so <laughs> so this is a uh, something uh, it's a good progress i can say in the maritime industry uh, in 1998 uh, we did the survey for the maritime industry uh, through the international transport workers federation at that time uh, we could see only 6 to 8 percent women were in the maritime industry but today gradually it is uh, growing up and uh, today i think more than uh, 12 to 15 percent women are in the maritime industry in the port industry also and uh, but of course the ratio is too low but we have to work very hard to bring them on the platform so ambika uh, as she mentioned that the representation of women at uh, port side has been considerably low earlier do you reckon i mean do you think it's uh, changing now yes definitely it is changing but uh, if you look at the overall maritime sector that has the worst or the lowest ratio of females in our sector across across the globe so there are certain challenges like the visibility the marketing of the maritime sector not many people are aware about the profile where women can fit in beautifully so that's a reason b are the general challenges which any sector faces for getting more no. females, females into so that is common for us all but where we as a sector lack in is more visibility more uh, making it more dynamic and it's a beautiful sector yes, to be course. part of yes but now uh, a because of the various initiatives which government has taken it is the scenario is changing and even the ratio the percentage of females being part of the sector is growing which is a very positive and welcoming trend yes i think we have seen a shift in yeah, trend yes. now though there's still a long way to go i yes, feel yes definitely but i think now we are seeing women in different diverse yes. roles as well right apart from just going out at sea but there is mm-hmm. the maritime sector is massive i mean yes. and port is yes. i think one place yes. where i think the more awareness mm. uh, should be there that there are so many job opportunities even mm. at ports for women i can give one small example uh, regarding this uh, how to readdress the sexual harassment problem and i, I feel so proud that uh, mumbai port was the first port who bring this sexual harassment policy at the workplace and now all 12 major ports are having that policy so if you bring uh, if you pay attention to the women issues i think they they come closer each other and it is very easy to motivate them right and uh, they can raise their voice otherwise uh, their voice are uh, been uh, unsung uh, they we cannot hurt the voice and they don't do, dare to raise their voice, raise voice yeah. so it's a uh, some of the example we can set uh, amongst all of them and we always uh, circulate the case studies so i think uh, some of the women's issue should be highlighted they should be prioritized but unfortunately we are less in the number so it's very difficult to get uh, the priority to the women's issue uh, there are so many issues uh, like uh, occupational health and safety also uh, because uh, for that reason also many women are not coming forward and as what ambika said uh, now government of india is taking a lot initiative and uh, i i really appreciate the shipping minister uh, shri sarbanan sonawal is taking a uh, much more initiative to promote more and more women and many many maritime institutes also coming they are giving the concessions to the women employ- women uh, uh, girls and uh, i think this is the best example i can say that even marex is also giving expo- exposure to the women and uh, i am really <laughs> fortunate that my all the wishes are fulfilled uh, through this uh, walk of success <laughs> and of course uh, giving the interview is also one of the best thing i think this will encourage to other women also to participate in the maritime industry absolutely i think the more we voice out things the yes. more i think more people and sometimes people who don't want to listen we have to raise the voice yes. in order to make sure that they listen how about many things comes prior to that yes. there shouldn't be a need of voicing Correct. the policy should be such where it's like a equal platform for all just to add to kalpana ma'am in the government sector at our ports we don't differentiate in terms of recruitment by gender it's like every vacancy or every role is as per the rules and regulations and the job profile 
we don't or we don't discriminate that this has to be a male or a female so in the port sector if you see the female representation at my jain port it's very healthy one that's good that's good to know and that's we always say even i am always uh, stresses and emphasizes that it should never be about the gender it yes. should be about the role about they can role. play yes, uh, when they come to a job and if you're competent enough it doesn't matter who yeah. you are right you get a job because you're worth it yes you a know? professional is a professional, professional. i yes. really don't feel that you know or proud to be called a female marketer absolutely. or a female port professional a professional exactly. is a professional. professional absolutely no labeling there yes so uh, ambika tell me something how do you manage the stakeholder communication including the port customers the local authorities how do you get into that mode at uh, jn port uh, coming from you know media to a port sector was like a big shift in terms of learning knowing the know how and everything the entire environment changed but i was blessed to have very dynamic chairperson deputy chairman persons and my all my colleagues at jn port from whom i have uh, learned a lot yeah. when i joined in 2013 right from the chairperson that time mr radhakrishnan moving to mr nn kumar then mr neeraj bansal you mr anil digikar then we had mr sanjay sethi and the current chairperson mr umesh ritwal they all have had a great influence on me and i have learned immensely from these all people so whatever uh, the growth or the knowledge i have gained here is these all leaders have played a significant role and to uh, as a as a port there's a lot of learning opportunity right the various platforms that we are exposed to when every day there is some or the other key important task assigned to us so in a way it has been a learning school a training school, school. and uh, this is how i've reached here so the communication with the stakeholders and maritime uh, stakeholders our uh, sector is a beautiful world we i connected well with them and till now i have been managing to do my work well and i am loving this place great That's so kalpana ji as she mentioned that she has learned over the way you are quite senior and you have spent so many years so tell me what strategies uh, you have used in order to you know manage and resolve conflicts or issues which is to take place as what ambika ji said it is a learning institution yeah. and we have learned a lot and uh, being a woman i got a lot of opportunity to, to work with the senior leaders as well as the bureaucrats so in four decades uh, i can uh, say that uh, comrade sar kulkarni comrade manohar kotwal ji comrade hanif pa ji and other federation leaders and my existing leaders kersi parekh and uh, kishor kotwal they taught me the how to make the strategy to combat your problem and fortunately we got such a wonderful chairperson right from uh, i have worked with the uh, abzalpur uh, kar sir then sanjay bhatia uh, sir uh, then right now rajiv jalota ji adesh sitar mare ji I I I think I have never met such a humble and honest uh, even bureaucrats in the industry and uh, even the leaders also my all the leaders even including Dr Shanti Bai Patel uh, they taught me a lot and in four decade I think I came to know the what kind of the problems we are facing in the industry and how we can combat it how we can uh, bring all the women together and uh, i am thank to the all india port and dock workers uh, federation uh, all the 12 major ports are affiliated on it and uh, comrade uh, sr kulkarni and comrade manohar uh, kotwal ji and uh, hanif ji they have established this forum for the women to address the women's issue and fortunately i would like to quote one example that uh, regarding the child care leave and because of our all the women's efforts now we are getting six months child care leave facilities to the all major ports women worker and uh, and uh, after seeing us i think officers are also trying their level best and in some of the port they got it so this is a big achievement now women are having the faith that ours problems ours this thing has been i uh, learn means heard by everyone True. so uh, so it's a best way to uh, raise your voice 
and get the benefits of it. And I think it's important because when policies fall in place, biologically, of course, women are different. Yes. Right. So obviously, if you support that, if you have a good support and ecosystem, I think all women yes, can yes, uh, yes, you know, thrive yes, in that environment yes, yes. and everybody can achieve. We also have dreams. It's yes, not that yes. we need to give that up because we go the that family course. way. So but I getting six month paid leave is, uh, I think it's very difficult to get in yes, any sector. Yes, absolutely. So we have achieved it. That's great. Oh, yeah, we have achieved it. it. <laughs> two years leave. Yeah, years and after that actually. now we are yeah. getting the two years uh, till yeah. the child become up to 18, 18. years. We can, with the paid paid leave two years paid leave yes that, yeah wow so we have a six months maternity leave which Correct. is across private sector and government sector okay so at our port we have two years ccf the child care leave so this is the government's initiative which we have been benefiting. so you can with. take it anytime or anytime when? till the child, till the child become 18 years. 18 yeah. okay minimum 45 days you can take minimum uh, yeah just twice a year yeah, but that's still great, you of know, course, because that's yeah. a great it's achievement. It's amazing. My yeah. son just turned 18, so he was in 12th. And the kind of, you know, the benefit I had, and even just a safety, okay, I can take leave whenever he needs to. Yeah. So that itself is such a big support and which the government has given This us. could happen only because the women are being involved in this bipartite yes. wage revision committee. <laughs> yes. So their issue has come up. <laughs> True. And, uh, and because of that, I think uh, our federation and everyone now they are getting the fruit of it. Yes. But so I think that's, that's so good because something it's like you know when the policy changes people remember course, you for yeah. what you have yeah. done and I think this is so important because it gives you I think it gives women more confident of course. that they have a stable yeah. job they don't need to leave a job in yes, order to uh, exactly. take care of uh, you know, just you know. looking at it two years paid leaves is like everyone thinks oh my god this is too much. But believe me, we don't actually take this two years leave. Yeah. We are very much, you know, involved in our job. It's not like, okay, we have been given this leave and we want to just avail it. Yes. But the kind of moral support it gives us that whenever I need, this facility is there. Yes. We are equally committed to our family and to our work. That's not fantastic. just the, because we have been given this, we will avail it. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, we but are professionals, right? Yes. So we have to understand that we get exactly. something with... You need to use it wisely with responsibility. And, and with responsibility. And despite of uh, if they are on the CCL and if there is a work arise, they yes. they they used to come at. I office. have been yeah. working from yeah many of them. CCL. Wow. So yeah. women are always uh, dedicated and committed. <laughs> <I> yes. <agree. laughs> yes. Absolutely. And I think that's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So Amika, uh, recently we had the Minister of Shipping who had visited their port. Tell us something about the visit and how was it and what was the purpose and what came out of it. Okay, so the recent visit of our Honourable uh, Minister was uh, for the various inauguration and after that the key inauguration was a chatbot for the skill development program for the Vardavan board. So it was not just our Chief Minister, I'm sorry, not just our Minister, but we also had our Prime Minister and the Chief Minister for the foundation laying ceremony of our Vardavan port on this Friday 30th. So as a port, we are privileged that this Game Changer initiative was inaugurated or the foundation laying ceremony was held by Honorable Prime Minister in the presence of Sonowalji and the Chief Minister. So for these all initiatives, we had the visit and uh, the skill development is a major thing that we are focused upon for this Vardavan port. That's lovely actually to see the progress. Uh, so coming to immediately because you just mentioned about the new initiatives and all that. Ambika, what is it that, which endeavor are you passionate about, which you really want to uh, take it forward? See, as a profile, I'm into marketing and communication. But uh, business development, it goes hand in hand with the marketing profile. Besides the business development and the communication part, training. Training is the field which I'm really passionate about because training is such an area where upskilling is a need of the year. It's not like once a person has joined your organization, so they don't need any kind of training. It's like for everyday job and even in terms of growth in the same career, you need to be trained for. And uh, for making the job uh, really interesting, we need to bring in more skill sets to that Absolutely. individual. That's how he will be more focused and more happy. So training is something which I would uh, really take upon and the CSR. So CSR is a place where along with the growth of your organization, you can contribute 
towards the people in your ecosystem. Lovely. Kalpana ji, 40 years, yeah. yeah, four decades you mentioned. I'm sure, I mean, there are a lot of things you've already told us about. Uh, these are like historic milestones, milestones, I would say. But can you share any one example in your these career line which you have, 40 years, which or any successful project or initiative which you were a part of and which you're really, really proud of? Yeah, I think uh, as one of the example I had given about the CCL, so I think that is the biggest milestone in my life, I can say, because as soon as the uh, we women were involved in the bipartite wage revision committee, they came to know what the child care problem is there. So, and today all 12, 12 major ports women are enjoying this two years CCL. The second thing I would like to say that in 1998, the government has brought this uh, sexual harassment workplace policy. And uh, uh, since uh, last 18 years, I am uh, giving the education to the woman, not only the woman. I think it is most important to change the mindset of the men. So almost uh, we have uh, conducted more than... Uh, 50, 60 workshop and so far we could educated more than 4,000 employees, men employees wow. and all the women That's employees because uh, women also should know what's their right and how they can raise their voice and I am fortunate to have this Mumbai Port Authority management, uh, they had given us a support and because of the initiative taken by the Mumbai Port and today the all the 12 major ports is a uh, setup of the women's uh, redressal system for the women's uh, grievances has been set up. So I think this is the, my big, biggest achievement. Absolutely. I think absolutely. Anything which can bring about a yeah. positive change yes. and which can encourage, I think, more women to join. Yes, I think that's obviously. a fantastic, fantastic achievement. So Ambika, a lot about work we have spoken. Tell us something about your family. Who is there in your family? How many children? Okay. So my husband is with Thovin GC and I have two kids. My son just turned 18 and I have a 14 year old daughter. Okay. And what are they pursuing or do you have you thought that? My son, as I mentioned, he will be joining college. So he's going to pursue bachelor's in engineering computer science. Okay. And uh, my daughter is in ninth grade. All right. Okay. Kalpana ji, what uh, yeah. about you? And my your family? husband is the chief accountant and uh, I, am, I, I am having the one son and one daughter but I have lost a uh, few years back she okay. was very young at the age of 24 but uh, today I have a adorable granddaughter okay so I think uh, my my daughter cannot be replaced but uh, go, I do not know miss I am a little bit emotional for this and okay. uh, she was the gold medalist in pharmacy okay and uh, at the age of 24 I have lost her Oh, sorry to hear that. But you have got a granddaughter whom yeah. you can uh, spend some, I think, time and yeah. maybe see a reflection of your yes. daughter. Yes, I, I can live my childhood and I can live my daughter's childhood with her. Yes. So that's, uh, I think, uh, for that I am thankful to the Almighty. Yes, yes. yeah. No, that's fine. I think you have been very strong. And I think, I know, nobody can replace uh, a daughter. But just imagine uh, the work you have done for other mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many of them, they're all like your daughters. Of course. And of course, the blessings are always there. And they are a strength. And I think it talks volume about the kind of person you are also. That you have helped so many people. And I think that's the biggest achievement uh, anyone can have in life. Great. Okay. Don't... Yes. Uh, but you're okay. looking so beautiful in your sari, so I have to ask you this. You, I've always seen you in these very pretty, pretty saris, and you dress up so well every time you go. So, uh, do you have a choice of saris or what? Or do you have a particular uh, brand of saris you wear? And smile adds to it. And the smile adds to it. <laughs> I, I love to wear the sari because sari are a grace. Uh, we can carry our legacy and the heritage. I can say Indian culture. And as you know that I, I am representing uh, Indian workers in uh, International Labour Organization, in International Transport Workers Federation, as well as uh, in many uh, uh, CITU Federation, ITUC Federation. So I think that uh, I always prefer uh, to, to carry our legacy 
and of course uh, it's and we should i am comfortable with the sari and as what say i i am having all the state sari because <laughs> we said uh, mahatma gandhi said be local be vocal yes. yeah. so we have to promote our own um, heritage and uh, of course uh, it is up to the suitability of the program for example yesterday you have said that it will be the green background back side so <laughs> then i thought uh, that yellow will be better with the green no we like going to change the background anyways <laughs> So that is that is right. So which is your so, favorite state sari? Ah, uh, I like? I love all, all the state sari. Uh, I like for the cotton. I can go to the Assam or to the Ahmedabad, Gujarat, or or uh, to the Kutch also. I love the sari. Okay. So I think yes. every state is having their yeah, own 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 particularity. And uh, I am proudly said I am having. All the state sari with me. <laughs> wow, I love sarees. I like women in sarees, but I'm so scared to wear a sari. I've never worn a sari apart from just once in my really? life ah. because I always feel I will fall. So I, I will. I, I will try that next interview. You will take with the sari. Oh my god. <laughs> People will be shocked to see me in sari because there's so many times they ask me. I said I feel I will fall. When I wear a sari, not really. So I am so scared <laughs> because once when I wore a sari uh-huh. and I was just about to tumble and I was like, I'm never going to wear a sari. Let them faint. I think next interview we will see Dipti Ji in sari. <laughs> <laughs> we are here to help you. Yeah, absolutely. So Amika Ji, tell me uh, as we are coming to nearly the end of the interview, but a few things I'm surely I want to ask you because you are also playing a very important role at your port. So what are the role opportunities do you think women have? in port first i'll ask you and then we'll ask alpana ji also see port sector is like any other sector it's nothing that women can't do and as i said a professional is a professional it's not about the gender yes by saying that and i speak for myself so as i said i don't believe in like you know male female discrimination all the profile and all the job role we can do equal justice or more than that so women have their own strong feminine power and we come from a area of you know compassion empathy these all things that we bring into the table and this is the key strength of a female so for us it's not about ki okay this role we can't do but what we need is more understanding because still as a family role that we handle we are more needed by our kids we are more needed for the other roles that we do and we are proud of it Absolutely. but we need an environment who is equally sensitive towards her need we need a little more flexibility and it goes across for all the sectors if i am working with jain port for the last 11 years so i have got such amazing supporting people that's why i continued yes because for any female there is a stage especially when our kids are really small where they feel the guilt ki okay why i am leaving my you know the small Some. young kids at home and running towards work. work so at that point if your spouse and your workplace if they both support you there's nothing that can stop female from you know not continuing their career because if you look at the various uh, data so at the higher roles the moment the women reaches those position the responsibility increases so that is a place that is a point where actually the female leave their career because they have to take a call yes whether yes. home or work how can they handle both but this could be done with the support of family and the work environment that's where such you know facilities like a ccl or a supportive environment or a flexi yard comes into place so as a port there is a various interesting profile which can female can enter it and we need more marketing more awareness about the port sector and the maritime sector as a whole and as jain port we are trying to do like every week we have at least 3 to 4 visits from the college students who come for the industrial visit to jain port and we take this work very importantly we have a specially a team who takes them for the port visit makes them aware what a port sector is in the entire economy the significant role as you are aware like you know 90% by volume and 70% by value is handled through maritime 
So we are playing a significant role in the entire country, in the entire economy. And as a port sector employees, we are proud of. So I would uh, invite more and more females to come and be part of this interesting and vibrant sector. I think well said because this is personally I think all of us yeah. who are working yeah. and who, uh, who are true professionals but having a good support system yes. is yes. extremely yes. important. You need an understanding family yeah. who understands your dreams, your yeah. aspirations and I think we are good at multitasking. So we, are, if we are willing to multitask then yeah. we yeah. should have the wings which we can fly and achieve what we want. Uh, last words from you as well, I would really want you to address and answer. What do you think are the roles and opportunities for women uh, and why should they come to port and what is the message you have for all the girls and the women who are watching the show? Uh, whatever my friend said, Ambika ji, I partly agree with her that uh, working in the port industry, I think we need the strong family support first of all. Because at home also everyone is thinking it is the totally male-dominated area and uh, and how the woman can work there that is the first thing the second thing the lack of the skill training unfortunately while we are we all the women are in monotonous job either typist or steno or safaiwala they are not in the skill job only in the coaching port there are the three four crane operators are there and uh, in JNP, JNPA, in DPW, there were the three, but now they are in the clerical cadre. So, uh, so I think that more and more skill training is required for the port sector that women should enter in. And we should provide the safe working environment everywhere. Because sometimes if I go in the port area after 7 o'clock, it's very dangerous yes. because it's so, you will feel so uh, aloof and lonely and very scary area. So we should, it is our responsibility to bring the confidence and we should provide the safe working area for them. And as what I said, the woman, every woman in any sector, they should accept all the challenges and believe in themselves. So unless and until you believe in yourself, I think no one can bring you up. So if you need uh, that woman should be visible, then every woman has to believe in themselves. That's true. You know, there has to be belief, I think, in each other. And uh, if we dream, we dare to dream, yeah, we yeah. should have the will to achieve our dreams as well. And uh, what better example than Kalpana ji, who has 40 years in this industry. <laughs> and I think you're retiring soon, Kalpana ji. Yes. Yes. Does she so, look like that? Absolutely not. You know, so what is going to be your post-retirement uh, plan then? What are you going to be doing? Ah, Whatever I can do the best for these uh, women employees that I will do. And the rest of time, I think I can give it to my the granddaughter, uh, the most adorable. She is now three. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, happily I can stay with there. But I will not leave uh, to bring this woman in the front, uh, in the port industry. I, I, my dream is to empower all the women. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And I think that is a really positive note for us to... Uh, in our episode but i'm so happy to have two such strong women on this episode who are multitaskers who have shown that if the proper balance is there women can yes. really reach higher positions and like ambika ji rightly said why should any women reach a position after such a hard work and then leave it for not being able to complete it because of lack of support and we have some classic examples which were shared today about how a good ecosystem is now created at ports for women and this is something which the other industry people should look at and should follow so thank you so much kalpana ji and ambika for coming to our show it was such an honor to have both of you uh, in that show and as a token of love from us we are going to share a small memento with you Absolutely. which are the months of anchor together as you like the name anchor yeah, together. I, I like yes. i like the symbol anchor <laughs> so, together so yes. before it ends so, a big thank so you, you really you yeah. really uh, means this anchor make us together. Yes. Yes. Jane yes. Port and uh, <laughs> Jane Port. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Something to look up yeah. to. So thank you everyone for watching. See you next time with the next bye -bye. new fresh episode. Bye bye. Thank you, Dipti Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's lovely. Wonderful. Yeah. Without Indian ships, exactly. Yes, that, that, that is that the is problem. The... That is the problem. Our dependence on foreign shipping 
after 70 years of independence has increased yeah, tremendously so, actually that, tremendously. so that is that is a very serious issue that needs to come to the attention of the policy makers and uh, this is what uh, the only thing we probably have done reasonably well and even i have some reservations on that is export of our marine manpower to some extent we have addressed that subject and satisfied the uh, the manpower requirements of overseas ship owners uh, but that is not the be all and end all but there again sir we are not we are not the first stop we are not the first choice yes we are there for various other reasons from 12% uh, from 20% in my days to 12% now, now trying to become 20%. Yeah. I left SCI when it was about 129. We are down to 43. Something has gone wrong terribly. Mm -hmm.